And now, Michigan Reimagined with Chris Buck. You know, I purposely earmark shows to talk about the arts because any vibrant community has a robust art scene, be it music or theater or visual arts. It's what makes a community really uh, vibrant. I mean, you you can have buildings, you can have jobs and things like that, but I really believe that the arts has a very big place in a vibrant town, and that is everything we're working to accomplish. So here to discuss what it means to be an artistpreneur uh, and to talk a little bit about Inktober is internationally known artist. Mila Lynn. Welcome to the show, Mila. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, I appreciate you joining me here today. We've only met once, so I'm really thrilled to hear a little bit more about your journey and your vision and events that you're, you're involved in. Um, so give me a quick background, you know, kind of where, have you fr- where are you from? Where's your journey taking you? How did you get involved in the arts? So I actually grew up in Lansing. Um, I graduated from Everett High School. I did the first round of the early college at LCC. And then I moved out to Detroit for two years and went on vacation to Miami and ended up moving there. Oh, wow. (laughs) I got offered a job and I was like, hey, it's the beach. Why not? Um, So I spent some time down there and through like hurricane season and I got into a relationship with somebody who lived in London. I was like, I can't work a normal job. It's it's not going for me. So I started um, I started touching back with my art background and I went to Pleasant View Magnet School, which was a performing arts school at the time when I went there and then since then I just I just continued and one of my trips to London I ended up renting out a studio there um, and there was like 200 artists they're all professionally known across London across um, other countries there's a girl who goes to Bali every year <laughs> she like rents out a condo and just works on her art studies and comes back and sells so that was a really good influence for me um, to come back and really put my feet in the ground But your education and your time in Detroit and your initial venture down to Miami was not art driven. No, not at all. So I graduated with a marketing associates from LCC. So marketing is everything, right? Right, Um, right. (laughs) So it kind of relates, but not really. But I never went to art school um, outside of the the middle school experience. Got it. Okay. So uh, share with us a little bit about what kind of art you create. So my main things, mainly I paint. Um, I also do these really nice graphite drawings. Those are usually like portraits, family portraits people will have. And then my favorite thing that I do is collage. So that um, comes from taking magazines that need to be recycled or that people donate. And basically I like paint with the colors of the magazine. So it's not really about finding elements like normal collage. It's about using the colors to depict whatever I wanted to do in the first place. Okay. Yeah. And so um, it was a conscious choice to not live in a kind of a business and marketing world, but to officially pivot into the arts. Is that correct? Yeah. I think um, after I graduated uh, from the, the early college program, I kind of freaked out a little <laughs> bit. Like, I'm not ready to go to a nine to five. And I was, how old was I? I think it was like 18 with my marketing associates. Like, I don't want to go sit in an office for the next, right. I don't know, 40 years of my life. It <laughs> and, scares the heck out of everyone else too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. And so I was like, well, let me give it a couple years and try something. And, and worst case scenario, I'll just end up doing that anyways. So, so right. far, so far we're still trying it out. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. Well, we were introduced by a mutual friend, Mike Marriott of Opportunity Arts, who's a friend of the show and has been on a number of times. And he mentioned to me that you had a really refreshing outlook on being an artist. And the phrase artistpreneur, you know, came up. And um, can you tell me a little bit about your view on how you manage art as a business? Um, Well, yeah. So that's taken from entrepreneur, which is anybody who does business. Um, And I think the difference between what you would say an artistpreneur is and a a normal artist or a hobbyist is that some people just do art because they genuinely enjoy it. And I genuinely enjoy art, too, but I want to make it lucrative. Right. Yep. Um, So that the way that I approach it is basically, I guess, using my marketing background is trying to find a way to like align myself with things that wouldn't typically be art related. Um, or that people don't commonly think of from outside of the art world. So currently I have um, a print release going that are limited prints with an artist who he, he makes music. Um, okay. So we're traveling to a different city every month and then releasing these prints. But because it's a lim- <laughs> it's limited edition, it becomes an investment piece. So him as a musician is turning his business into like... Um, 
the fine arts scene as well as me like touching bases with the music scene and now with spotify and all these streaming platforms like people in china people in korea people in right. um kazakhstan right. <laughs> have seen like artwork by me just uh through getting on those streaming platforms so that helps with exposure um another thing that i like to do is uh, work with shops not necessarily um so like soul nutrition downtown okay a lot of artists will go and hang art in coffee shops, and that's great. Uh, I don't want to be something that's just there for like a very temporary period, unless it's a campaign or something I'm working on. I like to be permanent <laughs> wherever I'm going to be. So that comes with painting murals um, or, or pitching it to a business as like, a mural can also be advertisement. So if people are going to come with social media and take pictures, now there's a reason to go there aside from the product that you sell. And then if people are coming, they're also going to get your product as well. Um, so it's just figuring out how to pitch art in a different way from just like, Hey, it looks nice. Put it there. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the conversation often stems around to treating artists with the respect that they deserve. And you know, that, that, you know, you should do this for nothing because it's good exposure. But, you know, and, and it seems like more and more artists are putting their foot down and, you know, are not going to be used. And the phrase starving artist needs to be a memory in a period in time when artists did things for different motivations. And so it's nice and refreshing to hear you strategizing. Mm -hmm. It's not just I'm going to create output and then hope that people buy it. It's it's specifically created with an end in mind, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even, I mean, my art show that I did last year was all about networking. Um, so I invited people from the art community and then I also, I had a sponsor and he's a former NFL player. Hmm. So I told him, I was like, okay, let's get a bunch of people who are artists or um, entrepreneurs who don't necessarily have connections with people from the investment community in the same building together because when would they ever cross paths now we have a bunch of startups that people can invest in if they really like it and you have a whole bunch of people who m might not have a way to move forward with things if they don't have funding and that was a really amazing thing to do because after leaving there <laughs> Um, I've continued to hear from people about the connections that they've made just from that show. And like the purpose was to show the artwork, but the al also the purpose was, um, you know, just to have uh, a community built around it, you know? Okay. Um, so, you know, before I forget, can you share website, social media platforms where people can see some of the work that you're doing, at least online? Yeah. So on social media, you can find me at Mind of Mila. That's on Facebook. That's on Twitter. That's on Instagram. And then my website's actually mindofmila.com. Okay. So super easy. Emails Mila at mindofmila.com. Right. <laughs> Mind of Mila, M-I-L-A, right? Yeah. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, good. So outside of social and, and, uh, and website, you know, how do you get your product in the, I mean, you mentioned this this collaboration. You know, in fact, why don't we just pivot straight to that? So the 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 uh, musician that you've partnered with, mm -hmm. how exactly does that work? So you've got art and you've got music. I mean, we know that you can record music and sell it. You know, and we know that art can hang on the wall. But how do the two kind of get together? Because it seems like they're a different deliverable. Yeah. So I love music. I create to music. I I do everything to music, drive to music, everything. Um, and I like to, so I had been doing something for a while with my time-lapse videos, whether they, whatever streaming platform they would be on. Um, and I would find like a local artist. So I had artists perform last year or musicians perform mm -hmm. last year at my exhibition. And then, you know, um, they're underground, so people don't know about them. So I would say, okay, I'm gonna make a time lapse and then let me plug a song of theirs into it. So when people are listening to it, if the music's good, they continue to watch the time lapse. People enjoy watching process art as mm. well. And then they'll be like, hey, well, where can I find that song? And then they go put it on their Spotify playlist. And that's, you know, where I'm helping out other people or uplifting, right. supporting my community as well. So then uh, when it came to the Inktober thing, I was like, I'm going to be creating all this art every single day. And people like the time lapse videos, but how can we keep it interesting? And I, I met Tori when I was painting a mural and he, um, he's just like got really good energy. And I told him, you know, it'd be cool if you did this Inktober thing, but in your own way as a musician, as a rapper, however you want to do it. And we just throw that over the time lapse. 
like, can you do it for 31 days? And he was like, oh, you need 31 of them? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And he, he said he would do it. So um, that's just how it came about, just just talking over ideas and then and running with them. So Inktober is an, uh, is a, a, an October-based event mm-hmm. that is managed and hosted by some other group. And then you and Tori are participating in that as... Partner artists. artists. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. I just want to make sure I understood that. So Inktober, what is the, so October, just so the audience knows, we're recording this in October of 2020. So Inktober kind of matters. But if you hear this in February, you might not get what the relation is. So what is Inktober setting out to do? I mean, what what is the general uh, so, scene? Where do you go and what are you going to experience if you go there? Yeah, so um, What we've set up is we've set up a display in Soul Nutrition that's downtown in Lansing, which is a Herbalife um, protein shake shop. It's a new business, just opened this year, like right before the pandemic. (laughs) Um, And and the owner, she's young, just like us. So, you know, we have like a lot of the same people in that space. Uh, And we set up a bunch of 31 frames all along the wall and then each day go and hang the art. So it becomes like a little game, you know, for people who are coming into her business regularly. Well, now people are coming in just to see like, oh, what's on the wall? And even before anything was hung up, there was a girl, she's like, oh, I just can't wait till it starts. I'm going to keep coming. Or I have people who tag me and they literally come like every other day to see it. And I'm like, I know, you know, they don't, I don't know that they drink that many shakes normally, (laughs) (laughs) but they're definitely in there now. Uh, So what Inktober is outside of what we are doing is something that Jake Parker, um, he's a best-selling illustrator, he, he put together this list, so every day there's a prompt word, whether it's like radio or bulky, ominous, um, shoes, all types of things. And it's just, when you hear that word, what do you want to create or what do you feel to draw? And that's basically for 31 days to challenge artists to develop their skills. And I always wanted to do it because I just thought it would be cool, but I never had the time to do it. So this year I, I, I wanted to spend some time just self-developing, and then I figured, well, why not sell them? Um, you right. know, right. if I'm going to do it, just put it out there and, you know, have it up for grabs. So now this may be obvious, but so your art, are, are, do you just sell the originals or can, do you make copies so a lot of people can have the same thing? So it depends. Um, I'm very particular about that. So there are certain, I don't, I don't think I actually, well, I guess my London, my London connect collection like that is unlimited prints. But um, I have a couple collections that are only like 150 uh, because I don't want it just to be, you know, for right. anybody to have all the time forever and ever. That's not how you make investment um, assets for your art business. Right. Um, yep. But with these Inktober pieces, they're all originals because they're just studies. And, you know, I want people to get excited like, oh, OK, well, if they missed one, then they have to get another one just to be a part of it. Um, I don't want it to be something that people can continue to have. But we're talking about doing a 32 piece um, and letting that be a print. <laughs> OK. Huh. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. <laughs> so how does Tori's music kind of incorporate I mean, I guess he's selling his own thing, right? So you have something that you'll sell, these these pieces that are done mm-hmm. basically to his music yep. for the people experiencing the Inktober deal. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he's getting exposure and, and, you know, obviously trying to sell his music, right? And then you're selling your art. But well, I, yeah. I guess like two years from now, his music that was created in Inktober 2020 and your art that was created in Inktober 2020 are, are going to be kind of two separate places, right? I don't know that they'll be separate places. Physically, yes, for sure. Um, I think that what he's planning to do is put together um, a an EP for the Inktober, all the Inktober music. And they okay. actually sound like little starts to songs. So we've had people come at like, oh, I want to hear the rest. Or, okay, this is really, really good. Um, so m- me and Tori are actually, like, we're fully in partnership with art. So, you know, any okay. of the proceeds that are coming to that, like, you know, we're breaking each other off for that. Um, and then... Yeah, and then when it comes to the music, like he's just incorporating the words. Some of them are really silly. Some of them, you know, are uplifting. Today, uh, today is actually really different. He has one that's a, it's a spoken spoken word thing. It's kind of eerie, huh. <laughs> but it's cool. Okay. So. And is Inktober an annual thing, or is this the first time, or how long has it been around? Yeah, I think they've been doing it since, I want to say, 2006, so, okay, so it's, it's been just... going for a while, yeah, and, and people all over the world participate in it, because it's, it's done, it's hosted through Instagram, so, I mean. Okay, 
Great. Well, let's downshift, unfortunately, to the pandemic. Um, you know, how has, you know, the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic affected your, the art? I want to say that it's it's done something terrible, but it, I don't think it has. I think um, I think life is about adjusting to the circumstances, right? So it doesn't mean that we can't have art shows. It doesn't mean that we can't, uh, you know, show art. It, it just means that we have to do it differently. So for me specifically, I've been getting a lot more commissions because I think people are spending more time in their house and they're like, hey, I have all these white walls. I'm going insane. I can't right. I can't do white walls. Um but then also I know a couple of artists where they've just taken their shows and they'll have like a full day and they'll they'll break it down by like people come 10 people here, 10 people there. That's fantastic. Well, I've enjoyed talking with you. I mean, I wish you nothing but the best. Inktober sounds fabulous. I've never heard of it, but I'm going to get involved in it now. <laughs> and we've been speaking with Mila Lynn from mindofmila.com. Thanks for joining me today. No worries.